give praise and glory to the Lord God Almighty. Give Him praise, give Him praise, give Him praise, give Him praise. Come on, lift up your hands and magnify the Lord. Glorify the King of Heaven. God is good, God is good, God is good. Give praise to the King of Heaven. Oh, how I love the man of Galilee. Oh, how I love this man from Galilee. Sweet Jesus, fellowship divine. Sweet Jesus. your hands and praise God. Clap your hands again and say, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love the man from Galilee. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love the man. Do you love him too? I love him, he loves me. We got a love thing going. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love this man. From Galilee. The Galilean man, his name is Jesus. Please be seated and prepare your hearts to share with me in the Word of God. Let me acknowledge God's servants, our ministers. Minister Davis, Minister Notman, Elder Whittle, Elder Watson, Minister Brian, and all the others, you wonderful saints of God, visitors, friends, well wishers, viewers, enemies, everybody. We're happy to be sharing together. I want to take you into the scriptures. We might look at all of the accounts if time permits, which it will not, I'm sure. But let's begin with that of the evangelist, Apostle Matthew. And in the 27th chapter, he tells us some things that happened. And I have someone to help me preach this morning. I can't stand here preaching all the while. And have these killed men sitting there. So Brother Harville is going to help me preach. Might not be preaching to you, but he'll be preaching to others. Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 through 66. 
And I hope you don't steal my audience, okay? I could see you stealing my audience already. Now the next day for that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so that the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you stood by your word, and even today you are standing by your words. And so, Lord, as we celebrate your goodness and the victory that you have given to your church, we pray even now that your Holy Spirit will rest upon us. And grant, O oh Lord, that this celebration, Lord, will bring glory and honor to your name. And all of us will receive your blessing. Send the word to all of our hearts. Make them quick and make them powerful. Save the lost. Reclaim the backsliders. Heal the sick, Lord. Strengthen and edify the believers. And give us a mighty revival. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Having read those verses from Matthew 27, 62 through 66, I want to bring you a message from the heart of God. You know I am not gifted to preach just a story as it is written in the Bible or to narrate a story. Anybody can break your Bible and read the story for yourself. But I believe God will anoint His servants to go a little deeper than just narrating a story to you. And so today I want to share with you on this theme. The scriptures must be fulfilled. The title of the message under that is, It Will Not Work. And if you consider the text that we have read, you would immediately associate this theme with the text. It will not work. Come on, somebody. You would notice in the scriptures that the men came to Pilate the day after the burial of Jesus. The Pharisees came to him. And they said, Sir, we remember that that deceiver, he said that after three days he will be raised from the dead. Let us therefore ensure that we prevent all of that by sealing the tomb and also by setting guards there. Lest his disciples come by night and steal away the body. And then the last arrow will be worse than the first. I am saying it will not work. Come on somebody. It doesn't matter what Pilate commissioned or what the Pharisees thought to do to prevent the bodily resurrection of Jesus. 
it will not work. And I believe God is going to use this word. And the Holy Spirit is going to minister, minister to my heart. To let some of you speak to some circumstances. Speak to some people whom you do not know but they know you. And you are going to let them know that the plans and the schemes that they have concocted against you that it will not work. Malo shikuna. Cannot work. Because the scriptures must be fulfilled. Touch your neighbor and tell that neighbor it will not work. Dear God in heaven. I feel the Holy Ghost on me. will not work when we look into the passage of the sacred scripture especially the historic events thereof and in particular this portion that I have read Matthew 27 62 66 I believe it illustrates two fundamental truths that I want to communicate. Firstly, it shows that there is no counsel, no wisdom, no understanding against the Almighty God that can stand. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor none of them can't stand. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost on me. If somebody pray with me here today. Secondly, it shows that indeed God is not a man that he should lie. You can trust his word every time. Under every circumstance. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. So here we see in the text the Pharisees who do not believe in the resurrection. They do not believe in angels. And all that are biblical facts they do not believe in because they are too far to see the reality of those things. They came together and they concocted this devious plan to prevent the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Talk to me somebody. On the third day has he said he would. But it will not work. Will not work. And so they presented it to Pilate and it looked good. It sounded good in Pilate's ears. Come on somebody. And so Pilate sanctioned it. He said, go ahead. You have my authority. Go ahead. Go seal the tomb. Go set the watch, the guard, the soldiers there. Let them stay there to prevent the disciples coming by night and steal away his body. And then they go around the place saying, He is risen from the dead. Because the last error we couldn't deal with, it would be worse than the first. But it's not an error, it's a reality. Come on somebody. Some people do not want to face up with the truth and deal with the truth. But the truth is going to swim like oil. Since my old grandmother died and gone, the truth is going to swim like oil and whether you want to face it yes or no the truth is going to face you look on somebody and tell them truth will face you i'm gonna work in this message so when i get through not me alone sweat you gonna sweat too tell somebody again the truth is gonna face you because some people putting on dark glasses in midnight like the area Charles trying to hide from truth. 
But it doesn't matter how dark your glasses and how dark the night is. The truth is going to penetrate those black, dark, high glasses and steer you in your heart. Steer you in the face. And if at all you are going to be made free, you've got to accept the truth. I hope I'm not preaching too fast for you, brother. But if you can't catch up with me, run. Come on, somebody. Wave your hands and praise God down there. Hallelujah. Everything about Jesus, our blessed Lord, as they are unfolded in the scriptures, are unspeakably interesting. There is never a dull moment in the life of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Everything about him is of interest. Oh, God Almighty. It interests his friends and it interests his enemies. It interests those who love him. It interests those who hate him. You just can't get away from this Jesus business. Whether you want him, yes or no, you've got to deal with him. If he's dead, you have to deal with him. If he's alive, you have to deal with him. If you believe it, you have to deal with him. And even if you don't believe it, you still cannot get around this Jesus business. Lift your hand and call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Dear God in heaven. Woo! Dear Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Rock on somebody and tell them Holy Ghost is here. Dear God. My glory. You can't get away from him. There is an old proverb that says, and I quote, Dead men bite not. But here we see Jesus. Although he was dead. Come on somebody. Although he was laid in the tomb. Yet we see Jesus still bites. And beats heavily. Upon the consciences of those evil men. And they tried to do everything to prevent him. But it will not work. Come on, somebody. You think, oh Lord, let me take my time and preach. Can you say amen? amen. They rest not all night, fearing that Jesus, though dead, amen, was about to cause Another tremendous thing in the nation. They rest all night. Jesus was about to cause them another embarrassment. Because he has embarrassed the Pharisees time and time again. Come on somebody. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. So your plan will not work. Come on somebody. Before we leave here today, some of you are going to leave on top of the mountain. Because you are going to speak into the ears of some plans and plots that have been orchestrated by the wicked one to bring you down. I want your faith to come alive to the extent that you can look in Satan's mouth, look down in his throat and say, Devil, it will not work. I don't care how you come, where you come from. Who oh, you bring it through? It just will not work. The scriptures must be fulfilled. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. The word must be fulfilled. It will not work. We're going to mash up some plan here today. We're going to tear up some plot here today. We're going to sink some ship here today. We're going to throw some bomb here today. And burst it up. Woo! Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. Will not work. Mm. 
they set out set out to prevent uh, to pervert and ultimately to prevent the powerful preaching of the resurrection gospel and if at all they could keep the lid on it they would have kept it there but it will not work let me show you what they tried to prevent according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 can you say amen for verse 12 he says now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead oh say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead but if there be no resurrection of the dead then is Christ not risen and if Christ be not risen then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain yea we are found to be false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if it be so that the dead rise not for if the dead rise not then is not Christ risen and if Christ be not risen your faith is vain he are yet in your sins come on somebody but this is not so Christ is risen from the dead somebody shout and praise him down there hallelujah Paul goes further to say then they also which have fallen asleep in Christ are perish if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable but in verses 22, 20 and 22 he says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Come on somebody. Touch your neighbor and tell the neighbor he's alive. This is what the Pharisees were trying to prevent. The powerful preaching of the resurrection message. Come on somebody. And Jesus today would be like unto some of those false prophets that have risen in days gone by. They died and they are still dead. And they can do nothing in respect of their followers. But thank God. Thank God. The scriptures are fulfilled. When the right time came. Tell somebody there's a right time. There's a right time. Some of you are rushing some things too much. Don't rush this thing. There's a right time. Don't rush it. Don't force ripe the fruit. Let it stay on the tree and ripe properly so you can enjoy it. Don't force ripe this thing. Woo! Right time came. The devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. The story did not end with Joseph Arimathea put Jesus in his tomb and leave it there. It did not end with Pilate, amen, authorizing the men to seal the tomb and to set a watch there. It did not end that way. Come on, somebody. The story continued on. It says early Sunday morning. Tell your neighbor this is Sunday morning. Glory to God. Mary Magdalene and the women ran on down to the sepulchre. They were still in love with Jesus though dead. They said we want to see what happened for the last two days. But when they got there, God of heaven, tell somebody one day you'll get there. One day you'll get there. 
you are going to get to the place in your life where you get the good news, honey. You've been getting bad news all the time. But one day you are going to get there where the news would be good news. One day you're going to reach the doctor when you get good news. One day you're going to reach a place where the news will be good. Lift your hand and say, I'll get there. And I'll get the good news. Mm. He is not here. He is risen. Come see the place where the Lord lays. Come and look. Let me share something of history with you. There were three notable men. And they had to become warriors in their own rights at a particular time. One of their names was, one name was Codwallow. C-A-D-W-A-L-L-O. Codwallow was an ancient king. And he commanded that his dead body be embalmed and put in a brazen image and set upon a brazen horse over the city of Ludgate. And he wanted that to be done because he wanted even in his death to be a symbol of terror to his enemies, the Saxland. Can you say amen? So when I die, said Swadwala, put me, embalm my body, put me in a brazen image, set me upon a horse, and let me overlook the city of Lord Gate. So whenever they come, they would see me still as a terror unto them. Although dead. Can you say amen? amen. Another was Ziska. Z-I-S-C-A. Ziska. And he was the brave bohemian soldier, military man. He asked that after he died, that they would remove the skin from his body. The whole word is flay. Flay my skin. And use it to make the head of drum. Not that drum, my brother. Use my skin to make the head of drums. Drums. And he says, when you use my skin to make the head of drum, wherever and whenever that drum is sounded, it would strike terror in the ears and the hearts of mine enemies and put them to flight. In other words, although I am dead, I want you to use my dead body to terrorize my enemies. I'm getting somewhere. A most recent one, King Edward the First. Everybody said King Edward. King Edward I told his sons and his nobles that if he died on his journey to Scotland, he was going to fight against Scotland to conquer the Scottish people. If I died on my journey to Scotland, they should carry his corpse around with them wherever they go and do not allow it to be buried till they have vanquished the enemies and subdued Scotland. In other words, even my dead body should prove a deterrent to the enemies from trying to overtake you. Come on, somebody. Mm, somebody praise him there. Codwallow, Ziska, and King Edward were all mere human beings. They had to ask that their dead bodies be used. Because they know once dead, they will remain dead. But Jesus had no need to ask for his dead body to be used. Come 
I preaching to anybody here? Jesus said, just give me a chance. I am only resting for three days. And you don't have to make any praise and statue out of me like God Wallow has for. You don't have to use my skin to make drum as this girl has for. You don't have to carry my dead body around as King Edward the first has for. Just give me a chance. Because a plot of the enemy cannot succeed. The plan will not work. He said, higher power. Lift your hand and say, he has power. God, I feel like preaching here. He said, I got power to lay down my life. And I got power to take it up again. And it's only a matter of time. He's going to prove to the enemy that all power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth, said the Lord. And so we are not using his dead body. He rose from the dead. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody he lives. He's not dead man inside of me. He's living man. Are oh, you not preaching with me here? He's not ghost inside of us. He's Holy Spirit. Talk to me, somebody. He's not drum beyond dub. He's the Holy Spirit that gives life to the church. For it's the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. Dwell in you, he shall quicken, quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. All those who are alive in Jesus, wave your hand and shout yes, shout yes. Woo! Hallelujah. So Jesus, unlike those men, Jesus could say, drive the nail in my hands. Laugh at me. Mock me. Bury me. For soon you'll see that your counsel will not stand. For I shall rise again. Talk to me somebody. Jesus would say, go to anyone you want to go to. Amen. Get the toughest concrete you can get. Seal the tomb as much as you want to seal it. Get the most trained eradication squad men. Wherever they are trained, bring them with the highest caliber weapon. Put them right at my tomb. But it will not work. Lift your hand and say it will not work. Oh, some of you are not saying anything down here. Don't let the devil sit down on you. Shake him off and tell him it will not work. Don't let him crowd up your life with all kind of doubt and fear and intimidation. Shake him off in the name of Jesus and tell that devil it will not work. I don't care who you go to, what you come with in the name of Jesus. The scripture must be fulfilled. It will not work. I am coming out. Lift your hand and say, I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout and praise God. Because the devil think, having sealed our tomb, having set watchmen there, he thought the game is over. Tell him, honey, he's just getting ready to start. Devil, you don't see nothing yet. Wait until after Friday. Wait until after Saturday. There's a morning named Sunday morning. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a morning named Sunday morning. There's a people called Christians. And when Sunday morning comes, my God, they are going to let the world know that I am alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. He is alive and well. Oh, somebody shout, 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 shout. Shout in the house and praise God. Seal my tomb. Seal my tomb. I'm coming out. Set your watch. 
will not work. Hallelujah. Some people go to the best hope your man in town to kill some of us. But it will not work. And when the local hope your man don't work, they go to foreign hope your man in some little back bush foreign country. Tell them it still will not work. Talk to me here somebody. And when that don't work, they call for the higher dealer and power. But tell them that too will not work. The scriptures must be fulfilled. We have power to tread upon serpent, scorpion. Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. It will not. Sit down, please. And so, <laughs> you're God in heaven. Somebody better say something down there. Mm. And so, Matthew says in the 28th chapter. In the end of the Sabbath, as it begun to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other women to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat up on it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. So the guards that were set, God opened their eyes so they could see the heavenly messenger. And when they saw them, they began to shake. Lift your hand and say, I, I have an angel with me. Come on, come on. I have an angel with me. It's only, because, it's only because some people are so blind. They can't see that some of us are overshadowed. They can't see that some of us are wrapped up and tied up and tangled up. They can't see that some of us have legions of angels watching over us. They cannot see that God has assigned heaven's battalion. Somebody praise God in this church on resurrection morning and release your spirit. Oh, yeah. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. For I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And when you look, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is alive. Lift your hand and say he is alive. Dear Jesus, let me quickly look at these accounts before I continue preaching. Mark says in chapter 16, Mark says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into sepulchre, they saw a young man, a young man sitting 
on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not frightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Look at the place where they laid him. Come on, somebody. You having looked and have seen, go tell his disciples that he is not there. We want to establish that in the mouths of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. We want to establish beyond the, any doubts, any doubt, reasonable horror and reasonable, that the scriptures have been fulfilled. He rose from the dead. And today he is Lord. Lift up your right hand and say, Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, I love you. <laughs> oh, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at Luke's account, chapter 24. We're moving on. There, Jesus. What Luke says in chapter 24. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Come on somebody. They did not find his body. Because it was not there. It was not just a spirit resurrection. Jesus had told them. I will destroy this temple. Speaking of his body. And in three days. I will raise it up. So it was not a spirit resurrection. And so they could not see a spirit. And at one point they didn't even believe that it was Jesus. Jesus had to say to them, handle me. Feel me. Touch me. Hold me. I'm not a spirit. I did what I said I would do. I have raised it up on the third day. Somebody praise God down there. Mm. Some of us might be down for some days. You're down for one day. You're down for two days. And it seems as though nothing going to work for you. But don't give up. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, don't give up, don't give up. A faith in God, man. Your third day will come. Your third day will come. Your day of deliverance is about to come. Don't give in. You must win this thing. Wave your hand, choir. Some of you look like you're sleeping this early morning. Wave your hand. This is third day. Wave your hand. Knock your choir member and say, this is third day. This is third day. God Almighty. Woo! All right, let's try and finish this. Let's look at John's account. And then we preach for 10 more minutes. St. John chapter 20. John says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see at the stone taken away from the sepulchre. She runs in and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. You see the interpretation Mary put on the missing body? They have taken it away, and we do not know where they put him. Some people today still do not know where Jesus is, or who Jesus is. Are you not getting this? They are still in confusion. 
We don't know which church to go. Because this one said this. The other one said that. Another one said that. We are confused. We don't know which church to go. Honey, you need more than a church. The day you get a relationship with Jesus Christ and the truth sets you free, you will do like what Jesus told the woman in John chapter 4. Worship is not confined to any particular church or any particular group or any particular place. Worship is now decentralized. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Whether you're Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Church of God, Adventist, Pocomania, Roman, Catholic, and any other one who open Bible four square, any one of them, you worship God in spirit and in truth. Not yesterday, today, tomorrow, but all the days of your life. Am I preaching in this house to anybody? Woo! Not Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, and all Wednesday. But Luke chapter 1 and verse 71. So you worship him in all in his all the days of your life. So don't get confused with religion. Why I know I'm preaching here. Don't get confused with religion. Don't get confused with baptism. Don't get confused with days and times. Get hooked up to Jesus. And when you get the anointing to worship Him, you are going to find out, honey, you want to do it every day of the week. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week you want to praise Him. Oh, some of you are not saying anything down there. They took away His body. And we don't know where they put him. And I wonder somebody didn't make a doctrine. And say well they brought him to the church of God. And if you don't come to the church of God. You'll never meet him. They took him to the Romans Catholic. They took him to power of faith. And if you don't come here you'll never find him. Are well, you not preaching with me? Touch your neighbor tell them preach with the preacher. They have a little place in their church. So if you don't come this way, you're not going anywhere. The devil is a liar. No one group can hold Jesus. No one church can hold him. Your doctrine or my doctrine can hold him. God so loved the world. Woo! No one language can hold him, evangelist. Spanish and English, English and Creole and Portuguese and Latin and French and all the other languages. No one language can hold him. This morning some people praising him. And if I hear them, I think they are cursing bad words. You're not preaching with me here. Some people praising God this morning in their language. And if I were to hear them, I would stand up and say, But Jesus, you're all the people that are cursed this big Sunday morning. It's not cursed, they're cursing. But in their language, every man in his own tongue, in his own language, he praises God. And God accepts the praises. Somebody jump to your feet and lift up your hand. And I hope you could find your heavenly language. I hope you could find your born again language. I hope you could find your new birth language. Hey, Shiborobande Koshamaha. Find a language and praise him. Find a language and praise him. Say something and praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. God, I feel the Holy Ghost on me. Hallelujah. Sit down, please. We know not where they lay him. 
Peter therefore went forth and that other disciples came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together. And the other disciples did outrun Peter. I'm reading John chapter 20. And I'm at verse 5. And he stooping down and looking in. Saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him. And went into the sepulchre. And see the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head. Not lying with the linen clothes. But wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple. Which came first to the sepulchre. And he saw and believed. He saw the empty tomb. And he believed. Verse 11. But Mary stood outside of the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself backward and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou wast born in hands, tell me where thou wast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. <laughs> when he said woman, she still did not recognize him. But they have had some precious moments together. Hallelujah. He knows her name. She knows that voice. She knows a particular sound. So when he said, Mary, immediately, Mary wanted to lay hold on him. But Jesus said, hold it a little, Mary. Give me a chance. Don't touch me as yet. Let me go present my resurrected body to my Father in glory. Let him sign me off. God, you're not getting my preaching here. Let him sign me off. Let him sign off the work complete. Come on, somebody. And then when he signs me off, I'll come back and let you touch me. I'm going to be around for 40 days. Talk with me, somebody. I'm going to walk through Galilee. I'm going to go through Jerusalem. I'm going to comfort the disciples. You'll get a chance to hold me. You'll get a chance to hug me. You'll get a chance to embrace me. But let me go home first. Let me go home and say, It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. Oh, it is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. Let me go home. And present my resurrected body. 
And then I'll come back. Somebody praise God. The scriptures must be fulfilled. Their plan could not work. The grave could not hold him. Death could not control him. The soldiers and the guards could not detain him. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. For he is my all time. Undefeated. Undisputed. Champion of love. Come on, somebody, do like this. Come on. If some of you do like that, you get rid of arthritis. You don't move it yet. You don't want to get rid of arthritis. If you have it, do like this. Yes, he's my all time. Undisputed. Undefeated. Champion of love. Of love. He won the battle. He won the war. The plot could not prevail. Devil, it will not work. It did not work because it could not work against Jesus. And I want you to tell some enemies today that neither will the scheme work against you, for the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus, it will not work. Lift your right hand and say, in Jesus' name, it will not work. Hallelujah. Tell every hey man, hey man, hey man. Tell every hey man that Bill in Gallus to kill the child of God. Tell hey man, it will not work. In the name of Jesus, tell every Judas who tried to sell you out tell them it will not work for the scripture must be fulfilled the gates of hell shall not prevail against the child of God put yourself and say can't work can't work stomp your right foot and say can't work man okay so oh, 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 yeah. can't work Mash it up, mash it up, mash it up, mash it up, mash it, mash it. Can't work, sister. Can't work. Some of you are getting this thing. Hallelujah. Tell the spirit of poverty. Can't work. Can't work. Food coming in a fridge. Money coming in a pocket. Money coming in a bank. Clothes coming to my body. Can't work. Children are going to school. Children getting lunch money. Children, school fee will be paid. Poverty can't work. We are at war. One against the other. Can't work. Can't work. Can't work. I would to God I get somebody preach with me. For three more minutes. Mm. Hallelujah. Tell the spirit of discouragement. Can't work. Tell the spirit of discouragement. Can't work. You discourage a whole lot of people. You cause them to backslide. Cause them to lose faith. Cause them to give up. But you can't work against me. In the name of Jesus. The scriptures must be fulfilled. Discouragement. You can't work. Can't work, sister. Can't work. Can't work in the name of Jesus. Can't work. Can't work. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. 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 
Tell sickness you can't work. For by his stripes, for he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Justice made of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, lift your hand and say, I am healed. I am healed. If you've got any sickness in your body and you can lay your hands on it, lay your hands on the place and knock it. This is miracle time. And say, In the name of Jesus, you can't work. Can't work. Can't work. In Jesus' name, can't work. We're not bargaining for you. Can't work. Come out. My head, God Almighty. Somebody better praise God here. Can't work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can't work. It will not work. It has never worked. It has never worked. Remain standing or stop right here. They went to Pilate and said to him, This deceiver, while he was yet alive, he said, On the third day, he'll be raised from the dead. Therefore, let us seal the tomb. Let us set military guards there to guard the tomb to prevent him from coming out as he said on the third day. Pilate said, you have my authority. Go seal it and make it as sure as you can. And they went and so they did. But when the third day came, Jesus said, can't work. <laughs> can't work. The scripture must be fulfilled. <laughs> Dear Jesus, somebody worship him with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has never worked. For I was young and now I'm old. For I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor received go begging bread. It has never worked. And it will never work. No weapon that is formed against the righteous shall prosper. It has never worked. And it will never work. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hand and thank him now. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Any backsliders? Will you not join me down here for prayer? This is your day. I go, Father. I should a motion tala
Every unsaved, every backslider. Come and invite Jesus into your heart and into your life. right now get ready to invite Jesus Christ into your heart by television by radio wherever you are the Spirit of God is moving right now and if you would simply childlike faith open up your heart to him he will come in especially if you say to him Lord Lord take me in. You say that to him now. I dare you open your heart and say to Jesus, my only plea. I dare you tell Jesus. One more time, Lord, take prayer time. Lord, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, dear God in heaven. say a prayer. Every man, woman, boy, girl, open your heart and say something to Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Every human being pray. Pray in television audience right now. Bow your hearts to God and ask Him to do something in your life. All hell is working against you. Let Jesus lift up a standard against the gate of hell right now. Oh! Jesus. Dear Jesus. We need you, Lord. A young man stand in need of you. A young girl say, I need him too. A mother and a father See, I've been waiting a long time. Jesus, hear their prayer. Answer their plea. Minister to their needs. Dear Lord, we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or even think please Lord right now touch me touch me Jesus touch me Lord Jesus many persons have touched me but today I need your touch 
which is a special touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for setting me free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands and give him the highest praise. Come on, say it until it's bubbling your soul. Say it until it turns something in your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Christians, go back to your seats if you're at the altar. Any Christian? All right. Let me just pray over everybody. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this tremendous response to the call for salvation, for deliverance. Will you rescue heaven perishing in my earring right now? Will you care for the dying? And God, just like the plot of the Pharisees, sanctioned by Pilate did not work against you even so let not the plot and the plan of the enemy work against anyone to whom I preach today tonight this morning whenever we ever but even right now reverse them Jesus let them not work keep your people the victory in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, glory.
Let me help you bear your burdens. That's the least that I can do.